It is a light. It goes from high to low. It is called the Endless Torch, and it actually works the first time I designed it. Well, mostly. So let's get into the build process. Hey everyone, check it out. I got new circuit boards, a stencil, and super caps. So yeah, this is a project I've had in my head for a while. I just finally got down on paper, or in this case, fiberglass. And basically, it's supposed to be a miniaturized version of my Infinity Solar Bank that I had before. Whereas this held six supercapacitors, and you can use the power for anything up to four volts. This one is made specifically just as a light, hence the name, endless torch that's what i'm calling this so let's go ahead and build it and see if i actually get it right the first time and it actually works this is also my first time messing with round circuit boards they've always been square or rectangle beforehand so let's put on some solder paste and uh get moving here there you go the inductor takes a lot of solder paste right here there's two holes yeah that's for the inductor Okay, that looks good. Let's pull it up and do the other two. Now, it's been a while since I did this, but I'm going to actually try to assemble this by hand instead of using the little pick-and-place machine. Most of the components are 0805 or bigger, with the exception of one LED that's going to be an 0603. So, it should be okay, considering my hands are starting to get shaky. I'm not exactly 19 anymore. So, we'll give it a shot and see how well I do. This is a supervisory chip. This is going to light up this little LED right here to tell us when the super cap is fully charged. Or at least so in theory. I've never done this yet. Now for the boost chip this time, we're going to change it up a little bit. I decided to try using the uh, MCP1624. And the reason being is uh, it needs an initial startup voltage of... The data sheet say 0 0.650 millivolts. That's it to get started. Once it's running, it will run down to 350 millivolts. That should pull out a little extra power, that last few percentage, out of a super cap. So let's give it a shot. Micro switch time. Got two switches on here. One to turn the unit on and off, and also one to switch from low intensity or high intensity. Okay, now here comes for the hardest part. I got the uh, ZSPM4523 chips I got a place, and they're QFNs, and they're always a pain in the butt, especially since I'm doing it by handheld today. But uh, to save some money, these three have already been pre-programmed with the 2.7 volt cutoff voltage because I actually grabbed them from uh, bad boards here. Um, these ones like had a bad trimmer down here. I never got around to changing it, so instead of spending another $15 on chips, I borrowed the um, ZSPM4523, the inductor, you can see right here, the big inductor, and over here also the 50 micro ohm current sense resistor, which I've already placed on here, these white ones. So let's go ahead and uh, try to place them the best I can. See if I can stabilize myself, right? And I've already cleaned them off. You can see on the bottom of them as much as I could. So there shouldn't be extra solder and there really shouldn't be any bridging problems. But who knows? Okay, I think I got lucky on that one. I like these little LEDs. These are made by King Bright. They're a little green LED. And uh, they actually have a nice printing on the bottom. These are 0603 footprint, but they actually show you it's pointing to the cathode, the negative side or ground side, which is beautiful. I love it. So that makes placing LEDs so much easier. The only thing is, when I made this board, I accidentally used the footprint for a 3014, but it will still work. Okay, now we have three assembled boards. Now it's time to burn them, or um, no, sorry, reflow them. Okay, so they reflowed pretty well. This one came out perfect right here, so we're gonna move that out to the side. These two, I have one solder bridge each. One right here and one right here that I need to repair. So let's do that real quick. Okay, 
Okay, that was easy enough. That one's fixed now. Let's clean it up again. Yes, just a little bit of brass wool. Clean off the tip real good. And I'm not quite sure about that. There we go. That looks good now. So, yep, that's much better. Now, I do also have some bridging on two of these on the micro USB port. If you look on the bottom here, there's a bridge there. And the other one has a, two bridges, one right here and one right here. Uh, if I was actually running data, this would matter. But honestly, the three middle pins aren't even connected to anything. We're only using it for five volt and ground. That's it. So I'm going to leave these bridges alone and just call it good. Okay, now here's where a problem kind of runs in, or at least inexperience. This is the first time I've actually had components on both sides of the boards. As you can tell, that's all populated. But on the opposite side, here is the single LED that we're actually driving the white, warm white LEDs. And I can't exactly reflow the board twice because half the components will probably fall off and I didn't feel like gluing them. So in retrospect, I probably should have made these pads a little bigger so this way I can hand solder them easier. But let's give them a shot. We're gonna hit them with solder, get a little solder lump on each one and then we'll bring it on over, reheat it and hopefully we should be able to put these on without too much fanfare. Held on one side, I started getting close to uh, melting the uh, plastic of the housing of this. No, it's actually soldered. Okay, there we go. They are now assembled. So let's go to the next step. Okay, so. Before we do anything, let's see where this cap shipped from because I haven't charged it or done anything yet. We are currently at 383 millivolts. And I got this all set up, ready to go, zeroed out. So let's plug it in and see if we get magic smoke. Woohoo! Check that out. One and a half amps. So, let's see how we're doing with charging. Oh yeah, we are definitely charging up very quickly too, especially considering it's only a single 2.7 volt 400 farad super cap. Warm. Ooh, that one's really warm. Where is my thermometer? Yeah, so far I'm reading uh, 151 volts, is, or 151 degrees Fahrenheit is the hottest I got so far, but she's still going. This is kind of meant to be a uh, fast charge. 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Woohoo! That's getting pretty hot there for a chip. <laughs> but it does have thermal cycling, so if it gets too hot, it should... Yeah, see, it just shut itself off for a second. It hit its thermal limit. It's got to let itself cool down. Might have to slow down the uh, charge rate. Yep, 201 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, she's bouncing back and forth from the uh, over temperature setting. So let's let it charge up and see what it does first. And we can always change the settings later if we need to. Yep, we're at 2.68. She'll come on, saying it's 100% charged. So it takes forever for it to do that last little two microvolts, if that. So we might have to change the uh, voltage in here from 2.68 top off to 2.72 so this way it actually gets there and uh, reduce the charge rate so this way it doesn't overheat as often or nearly as much. But okay, let's uh, actually try flipping it over now and try the LED and the switches and see how well it works. So let's unplug. 
And the LED will stay nice and dim probably until it discharges for a few minutes and then it should go right out. Let's see here, we should be on low setting. Let's turn it on and nothing happens. Go figure. So this is why it doesn't work, at least not the first time. I'm connected to the fully charged SuperCap. This is the second one, but at least I can reproduce the problem real easy. Check this out. It's on. Yeah, my solder job on these LEDs suck. So, yeah, see, now it's going to stay on for a second. Yep, there's high, and there's low. So let me, yep, I lost this connection again. So let me see if I can solder these a little better, and we can keep going. Okay. So now we've got the LEDs working, um, especially if I flip it underneath here and turn it on. You can see the light is on down below there. And we can go low and high. More importantly, you can see the LED for fully charged is up. And fully charged, of course, right now is... Let's see. I can slide this over just a little bit more. Two point seven one. I actually have this now reprogrammed for two point seven two volts. So it's only two millivolts over what this cap is rated for. You're not going to really hurt it, type of deal. Um, but that definitely allows this light to come on a little sooner and allow people to know, yeah, you're hundred percent charged. Okay, so now I have the uh, oscilloscope. We're going to measure the actual charge on it, and this should give me ten minutes over the whole screen right here. And we're starting at around 0.3 volts on the super cap itself. So let's plug it in and let's see the charge on it. We can already start seeing it come up a little bit. So we're talking about half a volt of division. So each line is a half volt. So we're approaching point, half a volt right there, actually. Yep, there we go. 0.5 volts. And we're only sucking up 300 milliamps right now through USB. Coming up on one volt now, and we're only talking less than three minutes, or right around three minutes, for one volt. It's still hot in the center, but the board is not heat soaked yet, and we are not getting the thermal shutoffs at all. So this is very good. We got a nice linear climb in charging, and we're about ready to hit two volts on the super cap. And we can see at two and a half volts, it starts tapering down the charge. Charge light is fully on, which means we should be at 2.68, although I don't know why it's not reading past 2.57. Let's get a meter to verify that real quick. But the green light is, in fact, on down at the bottom here, saying that we are at 2.68 volts. So I'm not sure what the discrepancy is here on my other meter. Let's uh, put this right here and get a reading. We are indeed at 2.7 volts right now. So. so we're talking about a 13 to 15 minute full charge time from completely dead, like 0.3 volts, where the LED and the uh, boost converter actually will stop running. So that's really good and didn't really get that hot. It never thermally cycled itself. So we're definitely going to leave this set for a full charge voltage of 2.72 volts and a full output capacity not what it takes from the usb what it actually takes from the chip and dumps into the super cap at 1400 milliamps just shy of the full 1500 because when you set it to 1500 the thing just goes haywire and just dumps as much power as it can into it it doesn't regulate it correctly so we're going to leave it at that setting this works beautifully okay so let's recap the new project is endless torch this is version one i think there's only going to be one minor revision for this and they're going to be ready to go out to the public um got two out of three working the only reason this one is not working is because i messed up the one switch here because i forgot to glue it and it came off and i didn't have any extra switches around but the unit itself still actually works perfectly fine and looks like the only things i really need to fix on this unit is the footprint for the leds on the top since that's the only component i need to make it a little more hand solder friendly and let's see here on the back of it i need to change the footprint for this led to the correct one we also learned that for the zspm 4523 chip that it charges this 400 farad super cap up in about 10 to 13 minutes as long as we set its output current 
to 1400 milliamps and at 2.72 volts for a termination voltage. Works absolutely perfectly and that gives us our nice little green LED when it's fully charged. This one's charged, this one is not fully charged. Our run times on low apparently are 40 hours roughly. Actually I got about 41 but I'm going to round down and say 40 hours on low which is roughly 2 milliamps and if you flip them over to high which is 10 milliamps I got about 8 hours of run time out of this thing. So these are definitely endless torches in my opinion because you can just sit here and constantly recharge them and you can recharge them fast and you get a long run time out of them. So let me get a revision done. Let me turn these back on low before they blind everything. There we go, that's better. And let me do a minor revision on this. I'm gonna see if I can actually try to make the boards a little bit smaller because they are literally just the size of the super cap. If you look down here, I wanna see if I can get just a little bit more of a beveled edge and everything else otherwise fits in here perfectly. So let me do a little bit of revision and I'll be back with this project in probably say a month or two. Cause I got camping coming up for 4th of July and I'm gonna have a few videos for that as well. So keep an eye on that. So if you like this video, thumbs up, please. Trust me, it actually does help on YouTube. Uh, any comments down below, and I'll see you next video.